What's going on you guys? My name is Cameron Noel and welcome to my commentary and entertainment channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. If you'd like to follow me on social media, you can follow me on Instagram, right up on this part, right up on her. Do that. <laughs> and if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, well you can also follow me on Twitter, whatever. You can follow me right here on this side of the screen or it might be on the same part of the screen, I don't know. You know, wherever I choose to put it when it's time to be put. Mm-hmm, yes. This channel is just a channel for me to like talk about various topics, TV shows, and things that are dear to my heart. So if you are interested in things that I'm interested in, this is the perfect place for you. And we can kiki, talk, have a good time, and just be positive and connect. Yeah. I got the idea to do this video on social media, but this happened months ago. So right now, this is not current. Don't check the Twitter timeline because you're not going to find nothing. It's not current. But long story short, there was a video of male black athletes. If I can find the video, I'll put it up somewhere that were crying and connecting, basically saying black men aren't given space, safe spaces to express their emotions. Cool. That happened, yada, yada, yada. About a week later, somehow the conversation became that they black men started talking and saying that they don't feel that the barbershop is a safe space for them. And then this led to like, I don't know. You know how Twitter is. People don't have patience. They don't have emotional intelligence. People are always arguing, so. And you know, na naturally the conversation went nowhere. Silly shit! But it also made me think of this overarching question that I'm gonna try to answer in this video. Is the barbershop a safe space for gay black men? Since it is Pride Month, it is perfect time to make this video, so that's what I'm doing. One thing that I've noticed throughout the years through social media, through things like TikTok, YouTube, and other forms of comedic, you know, sketches or whatever, there's always the sketch the gay black men, they'll go into like the barbershop and they'll like lower their voices, they'll dress differently, they'll engage in like um, masculine, um, you know, conversation, basically trying to appear straight. Which is something that I never, I never personally understood just because, maybe it's just because I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't, I don't have a straight voice. I can't lower it, you know, I'm just me all the time. There's no hiding. You, what you see is what you get. And I never really thought about gay men having discomfort within the barbershop. And the first thing that came to my mind was Dear Black People, Lionel, the character on there, during his own specific episode, they show him going to a barbershop and then basically getting call called like, you know, the F word and like the barbers refusing to like cut him or making him wait extra long. And it made me wonder, is this a accurate representation? Uh huh? Let's talk about that. The only thing I can go off of is as another gay, as a gay black man is my own personal experience. And honestly, you know, usually I'm always on this channel like, oh yes, this happens. This happened, this is real, this is a problem, and we need to talk about it. But honestly, um, homophobia in the barbershop is not something that I specifically have ever dealt with. Honestly, thinking back to like my own experience, I can't think of a time where like gay people have been talked about within the barbershops that I've gone to, at least not in depth. However, I am somebody who is a fan of the rule of thought that just because it doesn't happen to you does not mean that it doesn't happen. And I've also noticed that like when I like go to the barbershop, I don't really talk, honestly, when I go to the barbershop. I go to get in and get out, get my hair cut so I can look nice. And I mean, unless my barber starts a conversation with me, I don't really say nothing to them, but I mean, typically like, you know, the conversations are very pleasant. Like they'll ask me about like, you know, school. They'll ask me if I have a girlfriend and I usually just be like, no, I'm not like interested in dating. While I've never faced homophobia in the barbershop, I've never been one, I've never felt the need or I guess felt comfortable enough to be like, oh, hey, I'm gay. Or like talk about my love life, even when I have a good relationship with my barber. Just for the simple fact that no matter for queer people, no matter what, how safe an environment is for you or how comfortable you are or how long you've known certain people, you always run the risk. There's always that risk factor that that if you tell people who you are or you come out as who you are or how you identify that there is going to be a negative interaction so while i've never faced homophobia i've never like felt the need or felt comfortable enough to be like oh yeah like i date guys like that's just not saying that any barbershop i've went to or any barber i've had has been homophobic it's just like you know it's a, it's a, it's a hassle it's a hassle to like tell people you know because you never know how someone's going to react so I personally just avoid the question altogether. And honestly, I've never really asked other, um, and I have, and I've had, I have friends who are gay and I've never heard them speak about it specifically. So I don't honestly know what you can really say about it. But one thing I will say is when this topic was being discussed on like 
Twitter because, you know, people lack emotional empathy. I saw a lot of people saying, well, oh, you guys are just complaining. Oh, oh, you guys are like making up anything. Or they were accusing people of trying to, I guess, demonize straight black men, which has been a trend on Twitter whenever people talk about like, you know, intersectionality and like the things that queer black people and black women face, you know, um, the, t the phrase that, the phrase has been used that um, essentially straight black men are basically the white people of the black community. That has been a phrase that has been used many times. It's supposed to be a sisterhood. And I don't feel a sisterhood right now. Throughout internet conversation. And a lot of people were like, well, a lot of people were being hypocritical because mind you, like I said in the beginning of the video, those, that viral video of the black male athletes and this conversation happened like a week apart. So people were basically just like, oh, well you guys were just complaining about straight black men not having a safe space to communicate and express their emotions. And now who you are accusing queer black men of demonizing the barbershop, which is not what you're now saying is a safe space. And you just claim that you guys don't have safe spaces. And as far as that conversation, I just think that everybody needs to calm down and just allow people the space to feel what they need to feel. Listen, my truth may not match your truth. Your truth might not match someone else's truth. And just because someone else's personal experience or personal story differs greatly from yours, or maybe even opposes it, does not invalidate what you have gone to, what you have gone through. So if the barbershop is a taste safe for you, but not for someone else, does it mean that all barbershops are bad? No. Does it mean that all barbershops need to be like torn down and like eliminated or erased? No. It's just people sharing their own experiences. And there probably are some, you know, feminine gay black men or non-binary um, ma masculine or male presenting people who don't feel comfortable going to barbershops. And it's probably very realistic. And just because if it's just if it's a safe space for you, doesn't always mean it's a safe space for someone else. And I think once again, I've gone off Twitter a lot. I've gone on Twitter. I don't really, I'm not really on Twitter like I used to be just because I think Twitter can be a very negative place. And it's not the, it's not a great place to have dialogue because everybody is very defensive and everybody is very much if you don't agree with me, you're against me. If you're not with me, you're against me. And I think that that energy is not productive. It's actually very counterproductive. And you know, if one day um, queer black barbershops start popping up so that queer black men can, you know, feel more comfortable or a select number that feel uncomfortable now and want to feel more comfortable, that's a great thing. And that's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. And you know, safe spaces are very important. And I think that's something that regardless of where you are on this side of the field, you can agree. At the end of the day, barbershops are needed, okay? Black people need barbers, black men need barbers, black women need barbers, black people need barbers, people who are non-binary, trans, they need barbers if they have, you know, the hairstyles for it. So the barbershop not going nowhere. So anybody who feels that in this video that I am, anybody who sees this video and thinks that I'm like saying, oh, let's get rid of barbershops. No, because we all need it and we all want to look good. And I know we can all agree about that. But I'm not going to make this video too long because I just really wanted to get my thoughts out there. But... So to answer the overarching question, is the barbershop a safe space for gay black men? And honestly, I think the answer is, it depends on where you go. Yeah, honestly, but yeah. But those are just my thoughts. So if you have any thoughts and opinions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Let's have a conversation about it. And then, you know, whether we agree or disagree, let's leave it in the comment section. You know, people take YouTube very seriously. People get very angry, they get very, emotional and carrying around those harsh and hostile emotions are not good so wherever you feel put in the comment section take a deep breath and walk away that's all i gotta say and with that being said my name is cameron noel thank you so much for tuning in and thank you for clicking on my video and i hope you enjoy it i'm gonna have more content and i hope you stick around so make sure you like comment subscribe hit that bell notification down below so that you get notified when i upload new videos and i will see you in the next video Boy, Tway named Troy, used to live in Detroit. Big dope, dealing money, he was getting some coins.